all right everybody if you are here it is because you are having an issue with your airlift 3s 3p or 3h systems where you turn the car on and everything immediately does not work uh, as soon as the compressors turn on or run for a few seconds the controller turns off you can't connect the Bluetooth none of that this is the video for you so just to uh, show the diagnosis of the issue what we're gonna do we're gonna turn the car on all right you start your car up and the controller turns on and when the compressors turn on it blows then what happens is that the fuse blows the main fuse blows if you have one compressor you will only have one fuse but if you have two compressors you have two fuses you will have the main fuse which i've written main on and this will control the this will control one compressor and it also controls the power to the manifold and if you have a second compressor then this will be the additional second compressor wire harness which in this case does not matter so if you pull off the main fuse harness and look at the fuse, you will see that the fuse is blown, i.e. there's no connection because the connection has blown. If you look at the secondary fuse, you will see that that one will still be fine because the manifold is not dependent on the second fuse is just a separate circuit for the manifold so i always like to start with free solutions to my issue these solutions are going to depend on how your setup is if you have a very extravagant setup that's hard to get to then these could pose to be very difficult for you to do um if you did not do your setup and if you know absolutely zero about air ride systems oh shit, i need to flip my plate around uh this may also be difficult for you to do and figure out um if you hardwire your stuff with no quick disconnect options this is going to be a pain in the ass for you to do so all of these things because like i know people do extravagant metaphor setups and extravagant tank setups and all that stuff but the serviceability is not there and you may not do it often but when you do it it's going to be a pain in the ass so i did mine with more serviceability in mind than it looking good i really couldn't tell you which one is my main compressor is which which one is my secondary compressor um because I mean I just I just I didn't I didn't care and I wired it up but when I wired up my compressors I put um, connects on them to where I can remove them easily if need be and in this case I can swap them around uh, without doing a bunch of fuss so what I'm going to do is hopefully my wires are long enough uh, I'm going to simply switch these around from one to another and then I can figure out if the issue is going to be with the compressor or not. So let's start there. But like I said, both of my connections are going to be pull apart, quick disconnect. And these have been getting hot, it looks like. I see some discoloration. Uh, but as you can see, I can pull these apart. And then I can simply just pull the wires under here and just dis and disconnect to the other side. And then if everything works fine, then I will go either going that the compressor has gone bad because I've had these for six years now, I believe. Uh, or it could also be the one way uh, valves as well. If the one-way valves go bad a lot of times the balls will corrode then it will allow uh, back pressure and if it allows back pressure then the compressor has to run at a higher amp therefore it will blow the fuse because it takes more current to over to overcome uh, the additional pressure but th these compressors are not meant to fight the pressure from the tank 
and if you know how to if you don't know how a one-way valve work uh, YouTube it it explain it to you without me having to go into a long discussion so let me go and disconnect uh, this one switch it around run through a couple of cycles let's see if it worked and let's go from there This is going to be the main harness here. So let's run this over. Let me see, black to black. Red to red. As I always like to start with the free solutions first. And this also may come in handy like if you are stranded on the side of the road. And you're just trying to get up and going again this will also you know potentially save you you know just to get you home you don't need two compressors to get home you just need enough to get you back home so sometimes these quick solutions will be quick roadside solutions especially if one compressor goes bad that's why i like having redundancy have two compressors if one goes bad you still got one and you can still get where you're going so you know Again, if you only if you only can afford one compressor, then you better have a backup. Uh, in my case, I ran two compressors, and hopefully both don't die at the same time. So now that I got these hooked up, uh, I see that this one is my main compressor because uh, that wire there is the lead that goes to the secondary uh, compressor harness. So the left side compressor is my main compressor. So now my right side compressor is my main compressor and let's see if it still blows a fuse. Also, um, you want to make sure you keep spares. Uh, this is 55 30 amp fuses that I got off Amazon uh, for like five, six dollars. Has came in use over the last couple of years. Keep fuses in your car. That way you can troubleshoot a lot and don't have to worry about it. I have about maybe 15 left. I need to order another one. So let's get a fresh fuse in here, start the car up. Let's see if our issue uh, keeps going on or if it stops. All right, back at it again. Let's see what we got. Who rolls the windows down? All right, so everything is running like it should. I think both compressors are on. If that one compressor is bad, uh, it will definitely blow the fuse and it won't work. Both compressors are working right now. So let's run it through its paces and uh, let's see if it, if it stays on. So far, both are doing pretty good. So I'm gonna let this build up pressure and then I'll be back. And we'll do some more testing uh, after it comes up. I think mine said it's 155. After it comes up to 155, uh, we'll do some more testing. We'll see if it lasts or if the now driver's side compressor blows the fuse for the secondary and see if it stops working. All right, it's up to 155. Let's see. If it blows, where if it goes? I think I hear both. Let's see if both compressors are working. Nope. 
So the issue is going to be the driver side compressor because it is no longer working. So that means that the fuse is probably blown. So I'm going to start with replacing the one-way valve. Uh, and then if it's not the one-way valve, then that means that it's going to be an issue with the compressor. But let's verify with the fuse being blown because more than likely it's probably blown which yep the fuse is blown so let's replace that one way uh check valve and let's go from there that bitch is definitely blown now it is very important that you kind of have some background on what you're doing before you do it all right so one of those is being this check valve is in between the compressor and the tank. These tanks, when full, have a 150 PSI, 150 pounds per square inch, which is a lot of pressure when they are full. You don't want to go and attempt to disconnect the lines between the compressor and the tank when the tank is full you want to drain the tank heed the warning drain the tank if you die if you don't there could be some issues that will pursue now you may be saying well how do i drain the tank there's multiple ways to do it the hard way to do it is to go through the remote turn off the compressors and cycle the car up and down that's one way you can do it uh the easy way to do it well I'm, i say easy but it's easy in my case the easy way in my case to do it is to go to my oh shit kit and my oh shit kit i have a bag of the main stuff that i use and i'm going to grab my tire uh valve tool now this will vary per your setup i've seen people that have some setups uh, that I wouldn't have my stuff set up like that but you know that's just me but in my setup my drain valve comes off of my tank and it comes out right here under my seat and on my drain valve I have a Schrader valve so I can use this to drain the tank I can take my tire tool which has so I can remove the stem if I want to I can plug a tire. I guess that's like re-threading your valve stem. And I use this to depress the Schrader valve to empty out the tank. So I take this like this. Now I haven't drained this. So I also use this as a, as a water drain to drain the water out of my tank. So I can't remember the last time I drained my tank. So you may see some water come out as well. Yep, just like that. So that is the condensation that is built up in the tank from basically temperature changes. So when hot air cools, it makes condensation. This is also why you have a air water separator between your tank and your manifold, your electronic manifold, because you don't want the water from your tank getting into your electronic manifold and messing up your manifold and airlift will not warranty it if they see that water has gotten to the manifold so let's empty this out Now, if you don't want to sit here and wait, you can take the valve stem removal part and make sure you keep track on the valve stem because it will come out and you will never find it again. So 
again, if you do that, make sure you have a good handle on it. Because if not, it will come out, it will fly 40,000 feet, bounce off of three items, and end up on the space station. So now, let's go and let's uh, remove uh, the one-way check valve. I use all PTCs on my setup. Uh, I don't care for the compress the compression fittings. I use PTCs. PTC stands for push to connect. Uh, and what they mean by that is to connect the line to the fitting. You literally push it, and then it connects. Uh, to release it, you take the fitting. Uh, you take the fitting. I take my line. I push it in. Then I take the flap on the fitting, I push it in, and then it comes out. If you are using uh, the SMC uh, one-way valves that come with the system, um, it is a 17 millimeter. And then the line on the compressor itself is a, what is this? It is a 14 millimeter, so you need a 14 and a 17. And then I have a push to connect fitting on my SMC valve, which in this case is a 17 millimeter. And I don't know if this is gonna fit on my new copper brass industrial like shop valve. And I didn't think about that too just now, so we'll figure that out. So let's take our 14 on the compressor side, and then let's take the 17 on the SMC one-way fitting and let's get this off all right and then from here i will take off my ptc just like so and then here we have a one-way valve the SMC one-way valve now a quick way to verify if this valve works is that you can put air in from this side and of course it should go through because the one-way valve only works where air goes one way so in this case it will go from the female end to the male end so it goes this way you should not be able to blow air from the male side to the female side and I'm thinking hopefully this is where the issue is is that it is seeing air leaking backwards and when it leaks backwards the compressor has to work harder it's working harder it's pulling more current than 30 amps trying to force air against what it shouldn't be forcing air against then it's blowing the fuse if this is not the issue the problem gets more expensive to fix which will be probably a new compressor or buying a rebuild kit to rebuild the compressors so i'll see if i get myself in the shot but basically you can blow through it and that's how it's supposed to work but if you blow on the male end you should not be able to blow backwards and i don't know if y'all can hear that but i'm actually able to blow air back best case scenario I replaced this with this one and that solves our issue also on like these brass fittings it has the directional uh, path on it so you want to make sure for your setup that your male end and your female ends are going in the correct direction because the first one I ordered it was going backwards it was going from the male end to the female end and I need, I need the direction to go from the female end to the male end. Also, make sure you have the right sizes. They have quarter inch. They have half inch, three eighths inch, and a whole inch. So make sure you're ordering the right sizes. I got these off Amazon. They're for industrial uh, shops, like mechanic shops and stuff like that. So it should hold up fine to the little pressure that I'm putting on uh, them for my little Vier uh four four fours now if you have a show set up they're not going to look as nice but if your stuff isn't showing like mine is it really doesn't matter you know function over form so let me get some thread tape let me get the thread tape cleaned up off the compressor side 
let me get uh, some additional thread tape on this and let's cycle it back through again and let's see if this bad boy works now. Alright, so we got the Amazon industrial one-way valve in. Like I said, it is facing the correct direction, following the arrows. Take our airline to our tank, I mean to our manifold. Push to connect. Simple. Let's start the car up. Let's see if we can get it. Well, let's, let us, let's install a new fuse and then let's see if we can get this to blow this fuse or if we are good to go now blown fuse out new fuse in the main fuse is still good let's get the car start let's let the tank fill up and we'll see if we can get this bad boy to uh blow another fuse on the secondary side I'll be back once it's all filled all right so everything is the tank is filled up so let's give it a couple of cycles let's let it run a couple of times put some strain on the system and let's see if the fuse pops but since I could blow back through the one-way valve I'm thinking that was the issue so once it hits 155 uh, I air out again let it fill up again and if the fuse doesn't blow we should be good to go That'll probably be a good a good motto uh, for this series. The fuse don't blow, that means you're good to go. All right, let's give it one more cycle. And by this time, the last time, the fuse had blown for the driver side compressor. So let's see if it's still running. Yeah, it's still running. So I'm gonna say that this SMC valve, one-way valve in the inside, started messing up, started leaking back. And it was just drawing too much amps to try to push back against the presser, and that was blowing the fuse. So it sucks if it's the compressor that's on the main fuse because then your air rod just stops working all together if it's your secondary compressor it's not bad because you can still run off one compressor but like i said earlier you want to have your setup to where you can kind of do what i did here that way if the main compressor does mess up you can simply just swap the wires and then make your good compressor your main compressor and then you can limp yourself home get to your destination and then worry about it later and then you can order another compressor or a rebuild kit and then rebuild it so as much as what i like for stuff to look good i like for stuff to be serviceable as well because like i said if you have this whole extravagant nice chunk set up and you gotta basically rip everything apart to try to figure out what the issue is when you if you have an issue then that's going to be a problem so make it look good but also make it where you can service it if you need to because like i said being well i don't know if y'all drive y'all cars y'all might not drive y'all cars nowhere but i drive my car 
So, like I said, I don't want to be five hours away in Georgia, 10, 12 hours away in Florida, eight hours away in Tennessee and have an issue and I can't get back home. So, make it serviceable. Gain yourself some knowledge, which if you don't have any knowledge, hopefully me doing these videos will help you out if you do have some issues. Or you can watch these videos and then if you have an issue, then hopefully what I came across in the video will help you get back on your feet, get your car back up and running, and get you where you need to go. Because quite frankly, most shops, like if you, like if I was to go to Georgia, hell, even here in North Carolina, it's only one shop that I know that does like air ride stuff and i think it's exclusive garage in charlotte concord uh but other than that like if my car was to mess up here in greensboro i don't necessarily have a shop that i know of that could like i could drop my car off and they could figure out what's wrong with it and i can only imagine if i did have a shop that i could drop it off how, how much they're gonna charge are they going to try to charge me $500 to get me back up and running? Are they going to try to charge me $50 to get it back up and running? Because they don't know my setup. They don't know how it's set up. They don't necessarily know what the issues are. They may not have a one-way valve, even know what a one-way valve is. I don't know. So you got to take that into, into consideration as well. Because there was a girl uh, that I was following on Instagram. She had moved. She had her car bad in Florida. Moved to North Carolina somewhere or Georgia, South Carolina, I don't know. And then I think uh, her bag blew out, or she had a line blew out. And she was stuck like Chuck. So, you know, if your stuff is modified, at least know enough to be able to get yourself somewhere safe. Because if not, you're going to be stuck like Chuck, trying to find somebody to help you limp your car where you need to get it. So that's all I'm saying. It's cool to have modified stuff. It's better to know how to work on it. So, I guess this issue is solved. Uh, I'm going to just, of course, turn the car off. Uh, swap my wires back around. Well, this is going to be my main compressor again. This is going to be my secondary compressor. Put my trunk back together. And we're going to call it good. Uh, I don't think... I don't think I have any new leaks. I might have a new leak because it dropped from 155 to 151. But as long as it stays there, I'm not going to have any issues. Uh, so, yeah. In my case, the issue was the one-way check valve. Uh, I will put a link in the description for all the stuff that I used. Like I said, I do plan on doing an airlift series. Basically, like an airlift, airlift for dummies uh, is what I might call it. Where I'm going to kind of work through the process from beginning to end and then have some troubleshooting. Uh, stuff as well because i've been bagged for 150,000 miles six years so i feel like i kind of know what i'm talking about here so if you want to uh subscribe so you get notifications to, uh, to those new videos you can if not hey the channel's still here so like everything you do think build enjoy peace and for y'all that are still here this is my trunk all put back together so of course I got my ramps that I made uh, a while ago. Um, I got my spare wheel, which is my redrilled BMW style 95 wheel. And they got all my old shit kit, airline. Uh, I have extra braided line. Basically about everything that I need to potentially let me home besides spare bags is in this wheel. And that'll be a part of my airlift series when I talk about my oh shit kit. Harbor Freight Jack, my Milwaukee M18 mid torque, torque wrench, wheel chalk, and I think that's about it. But pretty much everything I need to get me off the side of the road is in this trunk. And I got a SCAR 12 inch, I don't know, SBR stage 2, level 2, something or another. I don't know. But it bumps. So. All put back together and ready to go to work tomorrow because Bertha takes twice as much gas to go the same distance so I'm happy to be back in my little economical gas saver so peace